Um, so I'd like to introduce our first panelist, Deborah Friedberg, who was born in Boston, but now lives in Portland, Oregon. She works as a B'nai Mitzvah tutor and also a religious school teacher and um, worked in publishing for a long time before she came to Jewish education. So like many Jewish educators, Deborah wears many hats, both in her education work and um, in her professional work in general. So welcome, Deborah. Thank you. Um, and Deborah is going to talk a little bit about the work that she's been doing with Living the Legacy in her um, high school class this year. Okay, thanks a lot, Etta. Um, good morning and afternoon, everybody. Um, I wanted to just start by saying that um, I, I, this was my first year teaching, both teaching this curriculum, but also teaching an academic class um, for high school students. In the past, I've taught knitting and other art classes, but I had not ta taught anything academic. So I was going in and I, I, I found the curriculum and, and was there at the um, last summer learning about it. And my intention was to straight just follow the curriculum. So the first uh, week I would do lesson, unit one, lesson one. The second week I would do unit one, lesson two, et cetera. Um, and quickly it became apparent that that wasn't really the way to go. Um, so, and there's my setting. So I have, um, their grades 10 and 11, about 15 students, but random, you know, between other things that they're doing. I never quite know who's coming. It's also a very social group. And so I wanted to, I had to take that into account. They've been in school all day and we needed some real active programming for them. Um, so I did start with um, the first few lessons in the Living the Legacy uh, Civil Rights Unit um, and talked about community organizing and Jews in the Civil Rights, um, their own feelings about um, how they identify themselves. Um, and as after a few weeks, I started wondering what had been happening in Portland during the Civil Rights Movement. I am not from Portland, as Etta mentioned, um, and I belong, our synagogue is, is liberal, and I just was wondering what was, what some of the older members um, had been doing. So really, um, I just started Googling, and I started Googling Portland, Oregon Civil Rights uh, Movement, and kind of one thing led to another um, and I pretty quickly found that there was a retired Oregon Supreme Court Justice named uh, Jacob Tanzer who had been who had been working for the um, US Justice Department during the Civil Rights Movement and in fact had gone down to Mississippi to investigate the disappearance and deaths of Goodman Cheney and Schwerner in um, which we had talked about, we had learned about when we were talking about Freedom Summer, and, and I won't go into too much detail about that if you're not familiar with the curriculum, but I found that he, so there was this local gentleman who had been really involved in, in, in this particular um, investigation. So I, I changed my curriculum to really focus on Freedom Summer and um, and the, what was happening in Mississippi at that time. So I found the, um, this made-for-TV movie that, um, that made-for-TV movie that really, um, because, partly because it was a made-for-TV movie, it was not, uh, we had some really nice scenes of Mississippi and what was happening. Uh, it told a story the um, activists who disappeared and, and were murdered, and then that ends with this with the three murders, and then two weeks later, um, Justice Tanzer came in to present to the kids. Um, so what we did in the week between is I had the kids come up with questions for him and I sent him the questions ahead of time. He then sent me um, this uh, 1964, My Story of Life and Death in Mississippi. He had written um, kind of a, a bio 
about his time. His kids had asked him to write that so that it wouldn't be lost. And it was, um, it was quite long, so I didn't have the, my students read all of it, but we read parts of it. Um, came up with some questions for him, and then he came in the following week. He was, um, he, well, when, when I first asked him, I was, I was really nervous um, to ask him to come in. He was absolutely thrilled and honored and a wonderful. Um, he joined us for dinner. Uh, we have dinner from 6 to 6.30. He joined us for dinner, and then he spoke to the class for a good 40 minutes, and he, he was a very good speaker. Um, and then he answered questions, and the kids' questions were a lot of, about how he felt. Um, he, a lot of the stories he told were of the people he had met and really individual heroes, not Goodman, Cheney, and Schwerner, but he did, he talked about individuals that he met that were were courageous just in their own, just their own way, in the little ways that they, that, um, that he, that they, the decisions that they made um, and how, how inspired he was by them. Um, and that was, that was really it. It was just, it, I mean, I know the kids got a lot out of it and I know that he got a lot out of it. Uh, so I was just thrilled that I was able to find that connection. And then, Deborah, can you just talk a little bit about your final lesson? I have a couple samples of student work yes. from Deborah's final class. So can you talk a little bit about what you had the students Sure. Um, yeah. We, as the very final, um, to kind of some, at, at the end of our semester, the kids do a parent presentation. And I wasn't quite sure. I thought we would just sort of talk about it. And then one of the students suggested that they do that they create slam poetry, slam poems. Um, and so I had them work in groups of two or three. And these are some examples of what they came up with. And I was in the way, and it was really, it, it just, I, yeah, I was, um, it worked, really worked.